Hello everyone, this is Peak Entertainment and we are back again. I'm going to sadly now report on the recent news and announcement that legendary Italian movie composer Ennio Morricone has sadly passed away. This is following complications from a recent fall that he had and he unfortunately couldn't recover from it. He was 91 years old and I'm sure we will get more details as the tributes pour in but Anybody who's into their movies or was very passionate about the genre of cinema will know that Ennio Morricone was one of the all-time legendary composers. He was famous, of course, mostly for the music he produced for the Spaghetti Western Trilogy, directed by Sergio Leone and starring Clint Eastwood, of course, as the man with no name. But he's done multiple movies. Credits include such Hateful Eight, directed by Tatino, The Mission... Bugsy, In the Line of Fire and there are other great films as well coincidentally I think that works well with a great composer and it's always I think very telling when you have a great composer that they always manage to create films that are iconic because of the music that they produce so what I mean by that is whenever you hear a couple of chords or tones from the music they produce, you instantly think of the movie. And that's where I think the true power lies. And that's a true indication of how great a composer is. And he's got multiple movies where he's created amazing, beautiful music and you instantly think of the movies. And it helps the movie stand the test of time, I think, as well as the acting, the directing, the cinematography, the editing, all of those elements are important. But I also think the music of a movie can be so vital, so key into the movie's power and the movie's impact and the movie's lastability within certain generations of moviegoers like an Ennio Morricone. He is right up there. He is truly in that upper elite of music composers iconic status guaranteed and approved so for me i want to talk about the movies that i think his music mainly stood out for so i'm going to go over a couple of lists now i'll, I'll try not to spoil the details of too much of these movies but these are movies i feel are regarded by many as truly great if not masterpieces and i think monokone's music was a major contribution to that so one of the first examples was the thing this was the John Carpenter remake, released in 1982, starring Kurt Russell. Really intense, still to this day, very atmospheric, very scary, intense horror fused by incredible special effects, non-CGI. It's very much a lesson. But Murakune's music in this movie is very minimalistic in its effect. And I think that works well because I think sometimes where a lot of modern horror movies go wrong is that there's too much there's too much sounds there's too much effects and it lacks that certain build-up and Morricone's music in this movie really helps to build that sense of dread and atmosphere throughout and I think sometimes what helps is the lack of emphasis in his music so sometimes people will be walking you know in the station or in the basement or in a warehouse and you don't think nothing's going to happen and then boom something just comes out and happens and I think his music was great we go on to the next movie which I'm sure we all agree is an absolute masterpiece and that is The Untouchables released in 1987 directed by Brian De Palma Kevin Costner Sean Connery Robert De Niro Andy Garcia just Dreamcast of course it outlays the story of Elliot Ness battling against Al Capone in the Prohibition era we all know The Untouchables the quotes the famous sequences all amazing and Morricone's music is truly outstanding here the three most standout moments for me include the intro with the opening credits where we see the title card of the untouchables kind of slow fade out into the background and the constant beating of the drum and almost like a stomping theme to it it's just great I love it it's so iconic and you have the kind of whistle tone in the background and this is theme that plays well again three quarters of the way the movie without spoiling it too much it's basically where Kevin Costner's Elliot Ness is pursuing a character amongst the kind of rooftop and we get a close in of Kevin Costner's face as he's really at conflict of what he wants to do whether he wants to pull the trigger or not and we see the emphasis of Morricone's music as the pace quickens within the tones of his music it's fantastic on here and the second part 
is the music that he uses for a death scene. Again, I won't mention who dies, but the death scenes that he produces the music for really create a sense of emotional weight and sadness on here. The kind of whistling tones again as we get the sequences passing through and we get the real emphasis and we get the close-up of the characters alike. And it's just fantastic what it really draws you in and compels you to these characters. And the third facet of the movie, the music that I like, is the more uplifting theme. Whenever we see the group of untouchables and they're walking in the street or they're kind of riding out on horseback, looking to exhibit and deliver justice. This is really kind of high-spirited, optimistic feel and tone. Again, I think it's one of those films that is enhanced because of the music that Ennio Morricone uses. We go on to a next film now, Casualties of War. And I think for me, this movie, I think it was released in 1989, again directed by Brian De Palma, starring Michael J. Fox and Sean Penn. This was really one of the most underrated movie i can't emphasize enough how underappreciated and how underrated this movie is it's essentially an instance set in the vietnam war backdrop where we get a group of soldiers and they go to this town and they abduct this young vietnamese girl and it is one of the most really unflinching and most powerful movies i've seen in general but in particular if you remember, we had that wave of Vietnam movies from the 80s, where it was Platoon, Full Metal Jacket, Hamburger Hill. Later on, we had, of course, Born on the 4th of July. And Casualties of War stands right up there. And Ennio Morricone's music really pulls at the heartstrings as we see the ordeal that the Vietnamese girl goes through and the kind of centre conscious of the character, which is Michael J. Fox's role. And... The music really draws you in and to the story and what happens within the plot throughout. And without spoiling too much, the ending scene. I mean, when I first watched this movie and I got to the end, I was literally almost in tears. It's so it's such an emotional weight and the feel and the direction and the kind of the meaning of the the scene in terms of the story. Again, I won't spoil it too much. Really, is an impactful and powerful moment. I highly recommend you watch Casualties of War. It's difficult to watch at times, but it's one of those truly powerful, compelling movies. I'll probably add a review of the movie to my channel sometime in the future. But Ennio Morricone's music really is emotional and powerful throughout this movie. It's a brilliant movie. It's brilliant musical score. Another movie I want to talk about just quickly is Once Upon a Time in the West. Now, this was kind of the post spaghetti western revolution directed by sergio leone and of course it stars charles brosnan and henry fonda and whilst i think this movie isn't quite on the same level as the spaghetti westerns there's a one scene in particular and it's kind of the climatic scene between brosnan and henry fonda i think it goes on for about eight or nine minutes and as we all know in these westerns sergio leone he was the master at creating these incredible face-off scenes between two combatants and the musical score here is incredible as we see them walking in these wide horizontal shots and we see initially the guitar sound as they're walking through to face off in each other we've seen that kind of style rift off in the parts of the caribbean movies and tarantino has used it a lot in some of his movies but nothing beats the the use of it here and later on we get the horns music coming in as we get close-ups of Brosnan and Henry Fonda as the backstory and the climatic duel plays out and it's just a magnificent scene and Morricone's music he's the master at this he truly is the master and as I said before it's those minimal tones those quiet tones then the more chorus like sounds if you like that really pulls you in and engage you with the story it's a fantastic climax it's one of those few elements that i think stands on par with the spaghetti westerns but Morricone's music is outstanding on here so of course now as i mentioned before we all have to talk about the spaghetti westerns iconic influential i don't think anybody could deny how much these movies play the role in modern day filmmaking in general and also the western genre alike you know we could talk about these movies so much but just to center on Morricone's music all great throughout 
All three movies, of course, of a fistful of dollars, four few dollars more, and of course, the good, the bad, and the ugly, which still might be for me the best western ever. But particularly the standout moments I want to talk about, and I think from his music, if we look at for particular for a few dollars more. We have the Indio theme. He's like the main villain of the piece of the story. And we have that duel in particular early on where we see his introduction. And he basically wants to get revenge for the person who imprisoned him. And we get a great duel. And we get the typical kind of standoff and the face-off between the two. And if you know this movie, you know there's a very powerful backstory. And it involves the kind of chiming music that always plays when... He opens up the penchant or the necklace like um, that he uses to remember from his backstory. And we get this slow kind of piano tone music. And then we get this vivid kind of organ. And it's really quite deafening. I remember it's this organ kind of piece of sound plays as the duel plays out. And we get the introduction of this villain here. It's really great throughout. I also love the duel that we get at the end of the movie. That's also great as well. We go, of course, to the good, the bad and the ugly. I mean, we could do a whole video on this film and the, the use of the music. But particularly the opening scene where we see Lee Van Cleef's character, Angel Eyes, come into the, the family's home. And the quiet kind of guitar and piano sound on it. It's really great throughout on here. We, I love as well the scenes reflecting the war and the backdrop because it takes place in the Civil War event, the story. And I love the fact that it just creates more texture, more world building. And Ennio Morricone has these constant scenes here where we see the fallen soldiers and we see each of the three primary characters just reflecting on the tone of the fallen soldiers without, and they see the kind of effects of the war. And Morricone's music really stands out we have that other scene as well where we kind of see there's a cavalry or there's a carriage coming through within the distance of the desert as we see the good character and the ugly character trapped in the desert here but i also want to focus on two i think of the most incredible scenes i've ever seen in the movie and these were the two scenes where my jaw was literally on the floor when i watched the good the bad and the ugly and i won't try to spoil it too much but we have basically two scenes the first, the ecstasy of gold, and this is where basically the ugly character, he feels he's found a treasure, but there's almost like a final challenge. He's got to kind of search for the treasure that they've been searching for throughout this movie, and the music is just incredible. And this is one of those great examples where the direction and the energy and the editing and the cinematography are all in perfect harmony, in perfect synergy. And we see the character striving to try and find a treasure and the musical theme. You've heard this theme played out multiple kind of movies and music videos played later on throughout the years. But the music on here is truly incredible. Trust me, when you watch this movie, the music is just fantastic. And then as if that wasn't enough, we get then the great duel at the end. The great face-off between three characters. It's one of those iconic, influential scenes in all cinema. I think it goes on roughly for about eight minutes, eight to nine minutes. No dialogue, just the three characters. And we see the typical close-ups and the horizontal shots on here. And it doesn't work without the music. It's one of those scenes where the music carries the film. Where you don't have any kind of physical, real action from the actors it's just the music it's the music that drives the mood that drives the atmosphere and in many ways it's like the director of the movie and the way that the music just inhabits this scene it's just so incredible i've watched this movie multiple times it still pulls you in now it's just incredible how a composer can manage to maintain and capture your attention for so long and you're just constantly drawn to the screen this so this final duel within the good the bad and the ugly fantastic and amazing it's just a true masterclass, and i think really it's something that so many other movies from today could learn from the fact that you don't need all these quick kind of booming soundtrack and 40 minute action sequences and flowing cgi you you know you can compel and maintain the audience's attention just from the sheer power of the music if you 
use it in the right way. And this is, I think, the greatest example of Morricone's music where, like I said before, you don't have no action sequences, no dialogue, but the music compels you to watch and it it really holds your attention for a good eight to nine minutes. It's just fantastic. It might be the best ever example that he's done from here. And just to cap off again, I just think he truly is in the upper echelon of great composers. Personally, I could only really think of John Williams as someone who I could put above him if you were ever to do a list of the greatest, most influential composers. I think John Williams, well, it's John Williams, you know, that, that merits a video in itself, but he really is the only person I could really put above Ennio Morricone. I just think Ennio Morricone, his music is beautiful. It really does create atmosphere and tension and set up. And as I mentioned before, a great composer really defines great movies so let me know what you think in the comments below i know it's very sad that we get these legendary personalities and figures within movies passing away like this you really have to appreciate them while they are you know alive and still in existence but let me know what you think in the comments below about your thoughts about any americone what are your thoughts on him as a composer what are the movies that you feel that he thinks or he brought that you feel are best do you agree with the movies that i chose or are there other movies that you feel truly displayed his music in the same and most powerful light as what i feel about the movies that i've selected on here let me know what you think in the comments below i will provide more videos in the future about this but that's it for now take care of yourselves stay at safe distances and we sadly reflect on a truly iconic and legendary composer in Ennio Morricone. Take care of yourselves and I will see you very, very soon.